Today we're going to talk about how to actually learn to code 10 times faster. No fluff and no shortcuts. The best way to have targeted practice is to challenge yourself in a healthy way and space out your learning over time so you can store the information in your long-term memory. The problem is most people don't always put in the same quality of work. They don't use targeted and deliberate learning to reach their goal of mastery. Alexa, how many hours have I been learning to code? 30 minutes, you lazy piece of shit. The planning process truly is the biggest challenge people have when trying to learn a new skill. I took four years at university and still didn't have an understanding of how to code. I wanna bring you to a basic level of understanding within three to six months. First thing is choosing a language. There really is no right or wrong answer here either. So let's say we pick Python as our next language. Next, we need to come up with a very targeted plan to learn Python. We're not just gonna pick out a textbook or watch a course or just randomly start coding spaghetti functions on an online IDE. We're actually gonna do all of those things minus the spaghetti code. For example, you need to spend time understanding what a computer is and how it translates your high-level language to binary code. You need to understand how to create algorithms and utilize data structures that don't max out CPU usage. You also need to understand how primitive and non-primitive data types are stored in memory, but you also need to know how to run your code and even test it if needed. The way that we're gonna deliberately learn is to A, diversify the way that we learn a new skill. Not only are we going to activate the logical side of our brain, but also the visual and creative side, and B, a planned timeline to iterate on. In order for these learnings to stick in our long-term memory, we can't just cram everything in all at once. We need to space out our learnings in an organized way. So let's pick our weapon. We're gonna use a textbook, of course, and an IDE for real life examples throughout these three to six months of learning. And then I'm gonna show you how we can create a customized plan that's easy to stick to. All right, so going along with Python as our language of choice, let's go ahead and pick a textbook. Now, I hate school textbooks with a fiery passion. In fact, I used to use my chemistry textbook as a doorstop long ago. So I'm gonna give you suggestions for books that are actually interesting to read. I would use Learning Python by Mark Lutz. This is an O'Reilly book. They tend to have really reputable books and courses. Next, we need to pick our course. I would suggest Harvard CS50. It's a free course that's taught by Harvard professors. You can also check out Pluralsight's core Python learning paths. This is what we'll be using as an example today. I'll link this course in the description below as well. Lastly, we're gonna need to actually code. At first, it's okay to just use an online IDE for simple print statements and arithmetic, but eventually you're gonna need to download something like PyCharm or IntelliJ. These are the resources we'll be working with, but these resources aren't any good unless you have a structured plan to tackle each goal, which speaking of goals, that's something we need to create as well. As I said earlier, this is a three to six month plan, so we're going to work backwards and mark our calendars accordingly. So let's go do that. All right, so here's my calendar. It shows the timeline between December 2022 to May 2023. So let's start with May 2023. What is the goal at the end of the entire program? I think having an actual software engineering job, as ambitious as that may seem, is a good goal to have. And even if you don't reach those major goals in time, it's good to set one anyways, just to have a quantifiable item to reach for. And make sure all your goals are quantifiable. The more vague they are, the less likely you are to actually reach them. Okay, so we can work backwards to April 2023. By the way, the way that we're gonna do this is to set high level goals for each month, just to track progress. And then we can fill in the gaps each week by assigning specific pages for reading, a specific program that you need to write, etc. All right, so going back to April 2023, our goal at the end of this month is to complete an entire coding project. Choose an actual project that takes about two to three months to make. I would suggest finding ideas online here. I've already gone ahead and added ideas for coding projects on the calendar. Don't worry, I'll link these in the description as well. For March 2023, we want to be done understanding the fundamentals, aka reading the textbook. We're gonna cheat a bit here, we're not actually gonna read the whole textbook. I mean, look at how thick that thing is, it's crazy. So we're also gonna use this course as a guideline to pick certain topics that we wanna cover in the textbook. Now, from December to February, our main high-level goal is to build that fundamental knowledge. The bigger milestones will come at the end of the program, as I wrote earlier. According to this course, here are the following topics we're gonna learn. Now, as you can see, I've gone ahead and highlighted the most important sections of this book as well. We can associate these sections with the course topics in order to make a sort of weekly syllabus. 
For example, let's say we have 25 topics spread over three months. Remember, the last few months are reserved for project building, interview prep, and job hunting. So I'm gonna go assign chapters for each week. Only a few pages of reading each day. On top of that, we're also gonna do three days of courses and two days of coding in the IDE. Now, this is about one to two hours of work per day. I know that's a lot, especially for someone that may already have a full-time job, but it's something that's necessary when you're really trying to land a job in six months. This program is gonna take effort, I'm not gonna lie, but it'll be so worth it in the end. Here's what the results will look like for the first few months. Alongside that, the course and the textbook should have examples that you can use to code in your IDE. You can split this up differently if you'd like. Maybe you wanna do four hours of work on a Sunday and not do any coding on a Thursday and Friday, for example, but it's, it's totally up to you. This is just a guideline. Now we can move on to the second half of the unofficial program. At this point, we're heading into March, 2023. Hopefully we've learned at least the fundamentals. You've spent time going through the chapters, taking the courses at a good pace, and also working on the examples to get yourself familiar with the implementation process. Next is building up concrete skills to actually land a job. I won't really cover the resume slash LinkedIn process in depth, but we'll try to focus on picking projects that showcase certain skills and also building up a portfolio that makes you really hireable. This is a site I found that has great examples of projects to build. It always helps to pick projects that will showcase your skills to your employers and even solves a problem in your immediate life. And of course, I'll link this site in the description down below as well. Make sure that you can actually spin up an application and use version control or GitHub is highly recommended to show that you're able to work in a a small scale enterprise environment. Bonus points if you can spin up a full stack application and add unit tests to check that your functions actually work. I would focus on creating two to three smaller projects rather than one big one, just so you can iterate on each version. Try to spread this out over the next two months and you can always refer back to your readings or the course that you just took as well. Google is your friend. Don't forget to use this to your advantage. Here's an example of a project I did recently. And if you wanna watch me struggle to build a Python game on my own, feel free to watch this video afterwards. While you're also doing this, you need to be preparing for your interviews. The best way to do this is using leak code. There's no way to really get around learning data structures and algorithms and you won't have to worry too much about system design questions if you're new to the industry. For months four, five, and six, you can focus on practicing these sorts of problems. I won't get too into the weeds here because I have a detailed plan for leak coding in this video, so feel free to watch this video later as well. So I went ahead and just added in the days for practicing data structures and algorithm problems. As you can see, we've spaced out the easy questions in March and April and the medium slash hard questions throughout the rest of April and May. You should also be overlapping finishing the projects you picked out for yourself. This plan is a lot more coding heavy towards the last couple of months, but you can always switch some of these around. That's the beauty of being self-taught. It's totally up to you. The reason I created this plan with a blend of theory, visual instruction, and small coding practice problems is because I don't want to overwhelm you like I was overwhelmed when I first went to university. I know how it feels to be left behind, and that's not my intent for this course. If you can't put in one to two hours a day for the study plan, then try being more realistic about your timeline rather than trying to cram everything in within those two hours. I get it, y'all are busy, so plan accordingly. This can also be a program that gets stretched in a six months or one year. It really just depends on your goals and your timelines, your comfort level as well. Hopefully this was helpful. Happy coding!